the highly individualized sport of track and field, most people think all of the excitement is only on the track. But in a closer look, you'll find just as much excitement and human drama right here on the infield. This is where the field events take place. Vaulting, jumping, and throwing. Men have been doing these tests of physical strength since the beginning of time. Yet by being relegated to the inside of the track, these events are often overlooked. Overlooked by the short-sighted spectator, and in some cases, even by the directors who run the meets. It was this lack of public awareness that prompted two of the biggest men in the sport to run their own sanctioned meet to showcase the art of throwing. you would expect to hear the guttural strains of athletic competition would be here in the natural beauty of California's Santa Cruz Mountains. This is Al Fuhrbach. For those of you who don't follow the sport of shot putting, Al was a member of our Olympic team in 72, 76, and 1980. He held the world record for the shot put, 1973. His throw, 71 feet 7 and 1 quarter inches. Al is a big guy. For some people. Right. This is Mac Wilkins. He throws the discus. Mac won a gold medal in the last Olympics this country decided to attend back in the bicentennial year of 1976. He also held a world record in the discus, 232 feet 6 inches. Mac is a big guy. A few years back, these two big guys living here at their Santa Cruz mountain retreat came up with a big idea. It was a cold winter night, and uh, the two big guys, myself and Al Fierbach, were sitting around talking about the sad state of affairs of, of amateur sports in the United States. In the throwing events in particular, you know, the lack of respect, the lack of uh, emphasis placed on them. And we decided that <clears throat> it was time for something positive to happen. And uh, an idea came to us that something positive would be a, a competition just for the shot put in the discus. We thought it would be a good idea to put together a situation where, where all these people could get together, exchange ideas, exchange enjoyments, and compete together. That idea was finally realized in 1979. They called it the Two Big Guys Mountain Games. Four years later, here in Al's backyard, the mountain games are bigger and better than ever. Seventy-nine-one, Kathy Picknell. The competition begins down the road at SoCal High School. The discus is thrown here because the big guy's backyard isn't quite big enough. Thirteen men and ten women from all parts of the world will heave this wood and metal platter half a city block and more. And if anybody pops out a world record toss, the two big guys have made certain it will be official. This event is totally sanctioned, totally official in every respect. That's because the event, by nature, is a fairly radical idea. Athletes putting on a meet for athletes, throwers putting on a meet for throwers. The women are up first in the discus competition. Carol Cady, Leslie Denise, Julie Hansen, some of the best collegiate women in the country are here. There were no big throws for most of the women. Lorna Griffin, American record holder at 207 feet 5 inches, had her best throw of the day with this one, 184 feet 4 inches, far short of her PR or personal record, fourth place in the final standings. 56 meters, 18. Scottish thrower Meg Ritchie had problems with fouling. Meg has a world-class PR of 223 feet 5 inches, but she failed to make the finals. She'll still have a chance in the shot put. 
But it was a good day for the two big women from West Germany. Doris Gudevort placed second with this effort, 205 ah! feet even. A new PR for Gudevort, four feet over her lifetime best. Teammate Indra Minica had problems in the early rounds. She admitted she was a little nervous. Her first throw was 35 feet short of her PR. She fouled on her second, which brought some stern advice from her coach. As she paced the high school grounds, Indra tried to psych herself up for one good throw. Then on this final chance, the big guys looked on as it all came together for Indra Minica. Eleven feet eight inches. That's further than she's ever thrown in her life. Minica wins the competition and the attention of the press. So what do you think of the two big guys' mountain games now? It's very good. I hope to come again next year. I'm sure with that toss, you'll be invited back. Congratulations. Thank you very much. In 1981, Mac Wilkins decided to hang up his spikes. After qualifying for the 1980 Olympic team and later throwing a lifetime best of 232 feet 10 inches, he shocked the track world by announcing his retirement. I was discouraged because of the problems with the Olympic boycott, and I was discouraged in another way. I was unfulfilled because I, I felt that uh, although I'd made a life record my last year, 1980, uh, it wasn't quite as far as I thought I could have thrown. But the self-imposed exile from competition only lasted six months for Wilkins. His body would stop throwing, but his mind would not. I could, I could physically stop throwing the discus, but not mentally. And so I think my technique actually improved during the layoff. The physical skills are the ones that uh, I have to, uh, to take a little longer to get back up to the top level. <laughs> What a better way to hone those skills than against some of the best discus men in the world. Thirteen men to be exact, six of them Olympic medalists. In fact, every Olympic gold or silver medal winner since 1956. Living legends such as this man, Al Order, winner of four consecutive gold medals in the discus starting way back in 1956. Or this man, 45-year-old Ludwig Donik, silver medalist for Czechoslovakia in 1964. Eight years later, in 1972, he won the Olympic gold. Donick is still throwing while he coaches this man, Emrik Bugar, silver medalist in 1980. But Wilkins' biggest competition of the day will come from this man, 24-year-old Luis Delis, a native of Cuba and a member of the Cuban national team. Delis won a bronze medal in the 1980 Olympics. The week before the mountain games, he threw 231-7, the fourth best throw of all time. Luis is the hottest thrower in the world now, and very tough to beat. The first round starts out hot and heavy, with Al Order heaving the platter 210 feet. But then it's the big guy's turn. With this toss, Wilkins becomes the first American to break 220 feet in 1982 a total distance of 220 feet 5 inches. John Powell, always a tough competitor, is 10 feet short of Wilkins. Bugar and Delise both fouled on their first attempts to give Wilkins the lead. For Luis Delise, concentration may have been his problem on his first two attempts, but on his third try, he gets it back with this throw. 224 feet, which puts him into first place. Technique plays a key part in the art of throwing, 
And with the discus, the most difficult part is at the very beginning because you have to make a, a turn of about, <clears throat> oh, 180 degrees and shift your body weight from between your feet over to your left foot and turn at the same time and then start to move through the circle. And because of this asymmetrical movement, the discus is uh, more difficult or it has this added degree of difficulty that say the javelin or the hammer or the shot put do not have. In the final round of competition, the Cuban moves through the circle and unleashes a powerful throw, the best of the day. Bugar captures third, Wilkins is second, and Luis Delis continues to dominate the discus world with first place, a great example of the art of throwing. Okay, let's the competition begin. First thrower. The taps are flowing and the spectators are primed for the second part of the mountain games. Another member of the visiting Cuban team, Maria Saria, is throwing well. Her first three attempts are close to 60 feet. The free and relaxed state of mind here must agree with the Cubans. Maria Saria wins the women's shot put and sets a new two big guys mountain games record with this heave of 62 feet, two and a half inches. Unlike European countries, here in the United States, there isn't a very wide knowledge of the technique and style of shot putting. For instance, the average person may think that most of the effort in the throw is in the arm, but Pierbach is quick to point out that is not the case. You don't throw the shot put, the shot with your, with your arm. You know, you don't want to just watch the arm because uh, that's merely what you release the ball with. The way you get 16 pounds moving and accelerating is with the total body. It starts with the toes, and the effort should work from the ground on up through all the muscle groups of the leg, the hips, the back, uh, up into the upper body, and finally the arm. The big guy leads the first round with that toss over 64 feet. Fuhrbach still uses the conventional O'Brien style of shot putting, named after the pioneering champion Perry O'Brien. This style is a very basic glide step with your back to the throw. But recently, a new style has gained popularity, the rotational or spin technique. Dave Loud of Athletics West, normally a conventional thrower, today is experimenting with rotation. <laughs> Loud is two inches short of Fuhrbach's toss. Score that O'Brien style one, rotation zero. For Al, the consistency of the O'Brien style is most important during major competitions. But the potential of the spin may be greater. We've had world record holders recently with both styles. The present world record is held by a conventional technician. Uh, the spin technique allows you to gain much greater momentum. And if all the timing is right, I think it produces the possibility of a greater throw for any individual. But the all-important matter of consistency comes into play in big competition. For spinner Brian Oldfield, that style gave him an American record last year with an incredible throw of 72 feet 3 inches. <laughs> this throw is four feet short of that, but still impressive at 65 feet 8 and a quarter inches. That toss puts Oldfield in the lead. Dave Lout quickens the pace with this heave, only one centimeter short of Oldfield's. We're down to the final round now. Can Oldfield, the king of spin, lengthen his lead over Lout? He's currently leading by a single centimeter. Come on, baby! Ah, got it! <laughs> Brian falls short of his leading throw. Now it's up to Dave Lout on his final toss. He has a PR of over 70 feet. All he needs is three quarters of an inch past his last throw to win. Remember, the spin is still new to Lout. 
may be too new to beat the master. Lout comes through under pressure to beat Oldfield and win the competition. A winning throw of 67 feet, two and three quarter inches. The games are over now. The awards go to the winners. But there really aren't any losers here today. A spirit has touched everybody. A spirit of learning, friendship, and respect. A spirit that you can't measure in feet and inches. The spirit of the two big guys, Mountain Games.